Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are going to be messing with this Hewlett Packard DAS storage box it's the D6000 and I've been messing a lot with this I bought this over a year ago and I've been trying to fill it up with drives ever since first I had a lot of trouble getting the trays for it then I got all the trays then I had a lot of trouble with the drives not working so um, now I've actually spent quite a lot of money to get SAS drives for it. From all that I've been able to gather, this DAS is made for SAS. Even though I am able to run SATA drives in it as well, up to about, well, they, the SAS drives will usually run without any issues in the first 21 of these bays. <coughs> there are bays in here. The Hewlett Packard D6000 will hold 70 drives. So in each of these trays, there is room for 35 drives. And I could fill up the first 21 of these drives and I would have almost no issues. After that, it became very picky on what drives it wanted to run. And it, there was no logic whatsoever in that. But let's go see what I've been up to. So out here in the winter garden, I've been messing with drives. That's because I coughed up a blotchy lot of money and I got some of these. They're Seagate and they're three terabyte SAS drives. Um, back from 2015, these came out of an IBM XIV, an IBM Enterprise storage solution, really high end and stable. Um, but I just needed the drive, so they came out of some trays. I have the trays over here. We're gonna go back to those because they kind of... Well, if you follow me on Twitter, you will already know this. I got all of these trays. I actually got more trays than I got drives. I bought 67 of these drives, so I paid a fortune for them. So I've been uh, taking out drives from the DAS. I have some 10 terabytes here. We're gonna get back to those. But all of these drives are different drives that I had in there uh, together with these boxes of drives. There are 24 in that box down there and there are some here. How many is that? That is 13 more. And um, yeah, and these are some of the random drives that really worked in there. Funny enough, these Western Digital Green Drive, they worked after uh, bay number 21. They, they were okay. Also these Samsung drives, they worked there too. Then there was some newer Seagate drives. They were able to show up there as well. And then there was some other Seagate. Well, all the enterprise, the real high-end enterprise stuff. No, nope, don't wanna work there. So also on Twitter, I've been bitching about this because, uh, well, when you take out 70 drives, almost 70 drives, and you have to swap around the, the trays, that is a lot of work. It doesn't seem like much, but it actually is a lot of work pulling all of these drives and putting in new hard drives in them. So we're going to be putting all of these hard drives in today together with some 10 terabytes. They are also SAS drives. So the hope is to actually get over 250 terabytes. That would be awesome. And um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is these trays that came out of the IBM. Well, I was buying the drives and the guy that I was buying them from, well, he um, he was taking them out of the trays because I was only buying the drives. But And I told him that he didn't have to and I actually also got all the trays that he had already taken the drives out of. So I have 78 of these trays for the IBM X, XIV. Well, when I was unmounting this, I thought that they look very familiar and um, I tweeted that out and uh, now you will see why. We take out one of these drives here. Those trays are identical. They just have some different plastic on the front. So um, yeah, I have a 78 drives that will fit a NetApp storage box and these are the 42 DS 4243 and they are rather popular and well known and it actually looks pretty cool with the with the black one so I'm still debating if I should change everything out uh, 
but it's a it's a lot of work so um, if you need some trays for uh, for example this one or for the IBM XIV they are available in my store but I'm gonna take all of these 67 drives and put it in the Hewlett Packard oh I forgot some fillers leave these three spots for the 10 terabytes that are also going in there um, I took all the drives that has uh, three terabyte labels on them um, I'll have to make some I haven't got that on all the drives but well I'll have to uh, update some for the other tree Okay, that is all of them. I have three drives left over. I had to, um, well, I had to take all of the drives that were for sale to get the good price. So, but this will work really well. There's three, four spare parts. Awesome. And I've also put in the the 10 terabytes in here. So. So now I'll go connect some stuff. Um, as you can see, this is off. People often ask me how I can afford to use all that power. And the secret is, I don't. I turn off stuff when I'm not using it. And having like 70 drives running for, well, no reason whatsoever, well, I don't do that. So here we are on the back side and I have just powered the Hewlett Packard. Uh, box here. Yeah, it's a cable mess. I have been trying all kind of stuff forever and ever So cables are all over different connection types and stuff, but uh, There's a power on button over here. So uh, it's gonna say the oomph. That it sounds pretty cool It's moving a lot of air. So on the front here it's checking stuff out I guess. Number 19 over here is doing weird stuff. Blinking disturbedly. Okay. I'll have to go and check the computer and see what's going on. At the computer here. The server that is controlling this is running Proxmox. And it's an older version, it's the 5.3-6 and I really need to um, to reinstall, upgrade each this at some point. That will definitely be another video if that happens, when that happens. Right now it's using most of the CPU and that's because I have just one virtual machine running here and that one is running folding at home. If you haven't joined my team on folding at home, well, I do very much highly recommend it. It's team 262,701. And there we are battling the world against the coronavirus project thingy. So uh, yeah, please join. And it's also just a friendly battle of getting most points. That's points. So yeah, never mind that. It also uses all of the RAM, so I'm very interested. Do I have more RAM in this? I forget. Uh, sorry, how much RAM do we have? Oh, 256 gigabytes. I think we're good to go. So this virtual machine up here 
is the one that the HPA is passed through to and the HPA is of course the card that is connected to the storage box I'm probably not able to turn on the virtual machine with it connected as I remember it let's see what it says if it does anything if it turns on it did okay it runs Windows some version of server 2000 and probably well I've written 2016 so that's probably it so the RAID controller or the HPA as it actually is is an um, LSI and to control that there is this mega RAID someone suggested that I should get their web interface the new web edition I tried to find it I, and then I got away from it again this one I kind of know how it works so we're gonna stay on with that so we're gonna continue that for a little bit and we're gonna go in here and it's gonna be very exciting to see what it has found oh 70 drives that would be so cool yeah, it also takes a while okay we already have a record 68 drives it sees uh, so which one I'm guessing that number 30 on the first one is not gonna be showing up it has never done that uh, 310 terabytes that's good one two three four five six seven five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty four Oh, there are updates available. Go away. 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, number 30 is missing. It has always done that. I have no idea why it's not there, but um, it is there. It just doesn't see it in this program. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Awesome, let's check the next. Three ten terabytes, yes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 so that is kind of nice and if we go down to number 30 there it sees it's three terabyte right there it actually says over here that they are IBM XIV drives in there so um, and funny enough they uh, have a capacity of, of three terabytes but two terabytes is unallocated so I'm guessing that I have to do a bit of cleanup before I may well maybe I can use this for a whole lot I, I'm not sure so how much space do we really have available cool so we have six 10 terabyte hard drives that's 60 terabytes and we have 64 3 terabytes which ends up with well 192 terabytes so well that's wrong there 252 terabytes Woo! quarter of a petabyte so we could call this the quarter petabyte project <clears throat> so also in here it says that there is all drives and that's 70 total I don't know why I think it's one short it starts at number zero here and it goes all the way up to number 70 so it should really be 71 so that is a bit strange I think I'll just try and make one big storage pool on here just to see it do something. Storage pools. We have created a new one. New storage pool. Next. What are we gonna call it? And I'll just select all of them. Let's make sure that we haven't put anything in there that's not supposed to go in there. It says 166 terabytes. It says that I'm gonna get 166 terabytes. So I'm gonna try and proceed. I've counted and, and as far as I could count, there was 69, but I might have miscounted. And well, you don't wanna do that too many times. So let's try and create that and see how that goes. If it, then we can see if we are missing anything afterwards. 
and the capacity was totally different what was bragging about so we did get the full capacity i guess down here we have the different drives and it sees a uh, drive one in shelf number one and drive one in shelf number two so i'll just go through the list and make sure that there's two trees and two fours and two fives and and nothing is missing hmm. it seems all good I, I think we have everything so we should probably make a virtual drive over here how you do this is that you take all the drives all the physical drives here and you put them in a big stash of drives and then from this stash of drives you make some virtual disks like you can say I have 226 terabytes I could make a virtual disk of 10 terabytes that is gonna be used for beep 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 and then I can make another one for 20 terabytes and one for 100 terabytes one for 5 terabytes and I can have a lot of virtual drives that all takes a bit of space off from the physical drives and I can actually also over provisioning that so I can have two drives of 500 terabytes I don't know I haven't I haven't checked if that is possible but over provision that and sure they're not 500 terabytes but they will use up this space until there is no more which is of course a bit dangerous but it's doable so let's do something down here make a new one make a virtual drive we're gonna put it on that one next I'll call it something how big should we make it just 20 terabyte we get a little bit of control of how we wanted to make this we can make it a simple one where data is just striped across the drives but there is no security so if we just have some it could be data that is not important at all you could put it on there temporary data and well we might just have a lot of it and it will just disappear if something fatal happens it's a bit dangerous with 70 drives the chances of something going wrong well increases by that many drives then we have mirroring that we can mirror across some drives and we have partitions which is like rate 5 or rate 6 i think we get an, an an another option here yeah we have single partition or dual partition if it's gonna store the partition data once or twice so this is like rate 5 and this is like rate 6 so let's just go with the rate 6 we have we have the space for it right next so provisioning type thin or fixed um, do we want it to take the space as we use it or take all the space now i i always use the thin um might just be me that is stupid but well. and here we set the amount of data so let's change that to terabyte and let's just do 20 terabytes next and we have created that all now we have created that we are being creative and so we are creating a volume on it and we're just going to use all the available space give it drive letter e i like that okay i fixed the name i saw that i had uh, forgotten a zero there so uh, yeah let's see um if this has any if it if it performs i was hoping to use hd tune here but it sees the hot drives it doesn't see the volumes it doesn't even see all the hard drives there's just a list and it just cuts off and it doesn't see the rest so uh, yeah uh, uh, that's not gonna that's not gonna work for us also it also just sees up to two terabytes so it might be a really old version i have here i'm not sure let's get rid of that then we have crystal disk mark and that is able to see our 20 terabyte e drive so we'll run that all test go 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 it takes a while okay 
I ran the test and I didn't think that the numbers were very impressive so I, um, I wanted to run it again but I found out that the server here was updating Windows so I uh, updated Windows and I tried again and I didn't get any better numbers. Um, this number uh, that it's, it's reading from the new drive with about 1.2 gigabytes per second that is okay but that it's writing with 45 megabytes uh, 45 and a half ish megabytes per second that's that's pretty low so I thought then we'll just try and move some data to it and I'm doing that down here so from my archive I'm moving to the disk and it's doing that here and it's 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 better than this number up here uh, but it is about the same so uh, yeah it's a bit slow saving data to all of those drives uh, it would probably benefit from a fast SSD disk to do some caching. But it's still awesome. I got all 70 drives up and running and that has been a challenge. So apparently the box really likes SAS drives and yeah, and that has been a suspicion for quite a long time, but it was really weird that it would run SATA drives, no problems in the first 21 base and then not as much in the last, even though these well, for example, these Samsung drives, no problems. They will work fine back there. Also, <laughs> these very cheap Western Digital green drive, they um, work fine as well. Um, I am gonna plug my own shop a little bit here because now I have a lot of these um, Hitachi HDST 3 terabyte drives uh, available again. Um, in the shop, 24, 32. There's a good bunch of those. And also if you should um, happen to have a NetApp box, that's a bad one. I have two that is broken. I'm not gonna sell those, but um, yeah, the plastic has broken. So bad example, better example. So I have a lot of these trays that will work in the NetApp boxes uh, or IBM XIV storage solutions. So if you should be in need of those, they're in stock. So do check out my Playhouse shop. Link will be in the description. I have to do some more thinking about what I'm gonna be using this big, awesome, powerful storage server for. Right now we just put server 2016 on there and uh, it's running storage direct. Mm, it's, it's, it's fine, but well, might wanna try something else. It's running on a virtual server, so it's very easy just to, um, to just install another virtual machine and just give that the HPA and that could be something else and then it would be in control of all the drives which is kind of why i made it like that i really also need to update my proxmox on that server in that regard i do also really need to put a powerful gpu in there so that we are also going to be messing with at some point yeah check out my playhouse shop i kind of have a lot of drives that i am willing to part with at the moment so um, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day. It is a really nice day. Bye bye.